So now uh, we come on the second one that is about the sealer. So what uh, Buddha says is that the shorter section on ethics is actually a very inferior quality. So people praise him for that, not understanding that he's much beyond this conventional kind of sealer. Okay. He says, Appa mattakam ko panetam bikkave ora mattakam seela mattakam yena puttu jano tathagatas yena tathagatas pannam vadamano vadaya. It means it's so trivial, this kind of sealer. But they Praise me as though I am doing something extraordinary. Actually, this is the real basic seal, not even to be spoken about. So, he says that he will killing, uh, he is renounced killing, he is renounced stealing, he is renounced Metuna Gamma Dhamma, Abrahmacharyam. In fact, in all religions, chastity is regarded very high, as though you have done something extraordinary. But in the Buddha teaching, he says it's the most inferior thing you could ever do. But for me, it's the most highest. I can say, you know what, I, I don't in, indulge in sexual activity. And if it was Buddha, he would have said you should be ashamed of doing so, even once if you have done it. Okay, but then we are used to having sex, so now if you quit sex, it's like quitting drugs. Then you say that, you know what, I don't take drugs any longer. So first of all, you shouldn't have taken in the first place. And you are saying very happily that you have quit it. So he says, Gamma Dhamma. Okay. And <clears throat> it's vulgar. Okay. Why it is vulgar? Why is sex vulgar? Or why is sex supposed to be uh, so badly seen in the spirituality, whether it is any religion, from Christianity to any religion, they talk about being a celibate. But why? We can understand about killing living animals or people or whatever, harming living beings. Yeah, okay, understood. Stealing also is understood. But what's wrong with sex? What's so wrong? Why? Here is the answer to it. You can see it in five dimensions of sex. The first dimension of sex is, like in spoken in the Aganya Sutta and many other Sutta, is that you will have body which is more and more harder rather than more and more subtle. It means as we indulge in sex, it will take to the animal realm of existence where the body is very hard. Okay, number two, when we have sex, it's dissatisfying after doing one, you want the next one. It creates a dependency. If you don't know anything else to be done, then indulge in sex. And the third important thing is, it will promote misconduct as well. Because if I am not happy with my wife, and then I would like to experiment with some other person, even with prostitute is okay. That's a third major problem. The fourth problem is that the energy, that is the, uh, the virya or 
can say sperms which are getting developed in a man as opposed to the woman as much as he removes it so much is is himself given up meaning is is whatever is called as his is gone the body now takes good amount of time because it's supposed to go into creation so when you remove it then it ensures that there is a problem meaning that problem is that there is no semen and sperm and that it has to keep on generating it i mean it keeps on generating it it has to take it from the body from the food it makes it from nowhere it can make it so let's say somebody indulges in sex so whether he is having the conventional sex or he is having as masturbation or he is having as whatever it is the person is losing his virya potential to create a new being so this is the fourth one and the fifth danger is that whenever he feels bored of something the next thing he would think of is sex so he would then indulge in masturbation and other kind of activities so these are the five things which are kamma dhamma kamma means a a villager dhamma is what he is doing as a work or something so this is the five uh, major problems what one can see and hence it is called as vulg vulga abrahmacharyam pahaya brahmachari samano gotamo arachari virato mettuna gamma iti this is not a good uh, achara meaning as a activity it's a very bad low frugal activity so when they praise gotama they praise him for stopping this vulgar sex and then he doesn't tell lies he doesn't uh, do the divisive speech visuna vacha then parusa vacha and One second. So then he doesn't talk nonsense, some papalap, and then he refrains from injuring plants and seed, from eating at night and food at a wrong time. So if you give up night food. and also vikala bhojana means that if he is not hungry you are not supposed to eat and dancing singing and music adoring himself with garland and fragrance and makeup luxurious bed then gold and money raw grains raw meat women and girls and male and female bond servants goat and sheep chicken and pig self and cows horses and mares field and land different from running errands and messenger buying and selling of land or anything falsifying weights metal or measures bribery fraud cheating and duplicity then uh, mutation murder abduction banditry plunder and violence this is what they talk about as a shorter section of ethics this is also there in the samanya pala sutta but one can see it here what is he trying to say okay so the best part of of uh, the the best part of this uh, discourse is that in the buddha shasana this is treated as the most 
lowest of the sila you can ever have. In a normal person, it's the highest of the sila what you can have. It's itself an achievement. But Buddha would say, don't tell me that. You're supposed to be doing that first place. So he says, out of compassion, I'm telling you what is immoral and moral. So if you want to go back to the Abhasara realm from where you have come, you should have quit all of the ten immorality. Not even one left. That's the starting point. We will be coming to that, how the Brahma will come and mansion and all that. So we'll be covering that. The same Sutta. But one thing we need to know. The origin or Agana, Agrana in Sanskrit, it means foremost. So if somebody has a question, where did I start? What was my starting journey? From where did I start? Journey. You and I and everyone, all beings started from the Abhasa, that's your home. Not the home where we are. Not this body what we have. That's not the home. That actually is a prison. Not the home. If we think we are in home, then we are the wrong thinking. It's a prison. You are imprisoned by two things, hunger and thirst, which creates all kind of nonsense things, whichever you do or whichever I do. Because of hunger, I will kill. Because of hunger, I will steal. Because of hunger, I tell lies. Because of hunger, I have sexual intercourse. Because that's hunger. Actually, because of hunger, I drink alcohol and other things. Because of hunger, I will have our speech. Because of hunger, I will have divisive speech or slandering. Because of hunger, I will talk nonsense. Because of hunger, I have abhijja, meaning asking for more than what is given. Because of hunger, I have anger. Okay. And because of hunger, I have wrong views. It's only due to hunger, nothing else. Hunger includes thirst as well. So we have thirst for processing. We have thirst for sex. We have thirst for every damn thing. So, we are in ruin rather than anything else. So, it's unfortunate that what is supposed to be a prison is treated as something in heaven. So it doesn't matter which country we are living in or what we are living in. The consciousness the consciousness is imprisoned. It can't go anywhere because it has to carry the body and go. Wherever it goes, it has to carry this heavy body, heavy burden. Wherever it goes, it will be identified. Wherever it goes, it will be asked hundred different questions. By another consciousness, which has taken the same kind of heavy burden. And then you create cities and towns and keep on engaging in some lousy activities which has no meaning whatsoever. So you keep on making things to make this body feel comfortable. All automation we have done so far is for this body. Isn't it or not? Air conditioning for the body, car for the body, house for the body, 
equipments for the body what else bathing for the body shirting trousers for the body bed for the body just see the amount of restaurants you have across the globe is for the body what else why else hospitals for the body who else right sofa for the body you you name anything in this world it's for the body meaning to keep the prison everything is towards that so this 10 moral is the minimum we need to cultivate if we want to go back to the place from where you started the journey so the first thing we need to understand it doesn't matter which religion which tradition which this and which that it doesn't matter all of us started from there all beings including an ant to whatever you can think of and hence killing any living being is not okay because the body is left here only if you if you kill an ant the body stays here but the being is gone right but you take the taint of killing the being that's the fun part of it the body is there only it's not gone anywhere because the body is like a house it stays there wherever it is last seen because the consciousness is moving the body it's not the body is moving the consciousness consciousness is moving the body so when the consciousness is departed the body stays wherever it is in however condition it is because body has no consciousness is the consciousness which aware of the body other than the other way around the body has no consciousness it's like a furniture keep the furniture wherever you want it doesn't matter it doesn't care at why have you kept the bed there i want to put the bed there it doesn't matter but you matter why you matter you matter because you are having conscious and that you is consciousness there's no person at all it's just the body which is a prison so you are imprisoned yourself it's time to stop the imprison stop being in prison so these are lower kind of a uh, pillar morality why lower because you will go back to the abhasara realm for me it might be the most extraordinary thing to do but from the buddha point of view in from the brahma jala sutta point of view where he is talking what is buddha it's trivial nothing for me yes now why shouldn't i engage in sex because i get the gross body simple and in agarna sutta he explains that they first engage in sex and even in christian you really see adam and eve they ate the apple which is a symbolization of you shouldn't have done something which you have not done because opapattika instantaneous birth is gone in you you could have been born wherever you want and i have engaged in sex so there's a only way to reproduce to come back is through the pain didn't have to do that so every time i get an idea of having sex i need to question this am i willing to come back through the womb exist and if yes okay enjoy
there are people who engage after 50s 60s they are really mad because they don't know what they are doing not only prostate will get enlarged that is one problem second problem is they would get into all of these kind of issues they go to the lower realm of existence rather than going up so all of us started from abhasara so and hence having compassion to all living beings is such an important thing because everybody started with sukha that is happiness because there it was only mind made it is always enjoyment there was no suffering the more the gross or the suffering the more the subtle no suffering and hence when you get into jhana you get that bliss which was lost and since the person doesn't know that he was doing it earlier also he gets surprised oh how am i getting this what do you mean that is your true nature if you are doing jhana it's nothing a surprise that consciousness knows it this is jhana you don't have to teach it just like you don't teach an eye to see an ear to hear nose to smell a tongue to taste body to touch in the same way you don't teach jhana it knows the jhana only thing what is required is to sit in one place and do it that's all what is required just like you go to a bedroom have a sex which is such an immoral act to be done you do a moral thing of meditation nothing special there's nothing called as i'm doing is doing doing an extraordinary feat the uh, like having food what's a better food so this body is a prison you are carrying heavy weight if i am if this body is 62 kg this consciousness is carrying 62 kg if the body is 50 kg then the consciousness is carrying 50 kg this is without dress and then after wearing dress few more grams are increased so why not have sex is because you will never go to abhasara realm so if you are if you are staying alone you don't have a family or you have a family and uh, family member understands that the husband understands not to have sex and the wife understands not to have sex you have at least done one good thing in life because this body is dirty it was never used just just like a horrible prison from from the head to toe nothing in this body is worth a look any questions from anyone no questions all good okay then we come to the majjhima sila the middle section now this one many people get confused is for whom this is for this this paribajjak tamana brahmana tamana is shramana one who is putting effort brahmana is a person of two kinds one the normal brahmin who is in search of truth and another one who is supposed to be an arya yet to complete it so in both the cases they enjoy food from whom whoever is given the food so let's say i go for a pindapatha 
and I start start relishing the means I've gone away from the Dhamma. Then they then they injure plants. And then, like root, stem, cutting, or joints, and all of that. And he says, Iti vahi bhikave puttu jano tathagatasa vannam padamano vadeya. What I consider is a most crude way they praise me for that. It's highly crude. So why do you injure plants? And why do you enjoy food? I wouldn't do it. As the most crudest form. And then, so they will keep food stuff for their own use, and food, drinks, clothes, vehicles, bedding, fragrance, and things, flesh. Then, then, uh, then they dancing, singing, music, performance, storytelling, clapping, and all of that. And then, like, then they keep on playing and all of that. All that, what a normal thing would, including um, astrology, palmistry, and so and so. So then they get into argument. You don't know what the teaching is. I know the teaching. I do this, I do that, and all of that. This is also another issue. So they are deceitful, flattery, hinting, billeting, and using material things to chase after other materials. So now, what's the difference between a householder and a recluse or a big householder? Is a person who has been waylaid. Thinking that it is his house. Hence, he is said to be a householder. Minimum, we need to be is anagarika. In fact, there are a lot of suttas where Buddha says becomes anagarika. At least, we should all become anagarika. Let us understand this word in a more clear sense. Agara in Pali means house. Or a place. Like in Bangalore, also, they while registering, they put Agara. It means a place, a house. An Agara, not having a place. What does that mean? This body is a place for consciousness. How about removing that? That's the deeper meaning of an agara ika anagarika. Ika is just a way to say this is. A person who has removed the house. So in English, they put it as homeless. That's a okay side sort of translation, but it's not a real nirukti or the etymological translation. It's just a translation which is okay. You can make out it's if it's called homeless. But the true homeless means that you have volunteered not only to give up this material house, but also this house, which is also same matter. So you are staying in this house just to finish your family obligation. So an agara ika anagarika. If you put an a n in front of agara, it means cutting off, negating. Okay, an agara ika. That is 
that is homeless so if i am named anagarika vilas it means that i am already homeless so that's the minimum i need to do as a minimum so a homeless person is as good as a bhikkhu but is not taken ropes nor the 227 or 239 vinaya is applicable to that person because he is still within the lay community so then we get into another word called upasika upas pasaka upasik upa means near sikka means learning upasika is a person upasaka and upasika upasika for female upasaka for male means one who is learning as a lay person what do you mean by lay it means a family what do you mean by family one who thinks there is a house and what is a house house is a place to stay and how many houses you have you have two houses one to stay in this body another one to keep the body in a place so basically all of us have two homes one you have to stay inside this another one you have to keep this inside somewhere because people can steal this and go away or somebody something can come and eat or steal or fight or do something so what are those glad flies mosquitoes and creeping things butterflies the honey bees snakes centipede millipede like that they all can eat this body because food so you are having just this body which is food is exact food is nothing else so you need to protect it and then cold but to warm it it's warm make it cold sun is there it burns go into shade it in shade it's cold come back to sun then the rain protect it from rain then you should have footwear otherwise you get blisters have a footwear then have a trouser then you should have a waterproof trouser then snow boots then you have blouse then you have jacket you have this of that and just name it just keep on preparing and preparing and preparing and preparing for what for the food this is the food this is a storehouse of food and when we say we get disease how do you get disease microbes what are microbes the living organism what are they doing they want to eat the food and what they do they cut the supply so the energy is drained by them they suck they require medicine if you ask for whom it is it's again for this body for this home an agar homeless because in true sense the consciousness is homeless it 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 really doesn't require this kind of home its home is bhasar this is what we need to see that where this Where did you start, Abhasar? And where have you ended? In this torturous place. 
but no way what are you talking is such a nice place and you see this who require visa the body and whom are you visiting another consciousness but then through this body so your body is recognized the body is scanned it's like somebody taking a bag and going and he is the bag is scanned and so is also the body what a what a joke so this is the fun part of it then we come to the low the high, larger section of ethics so they include the wrong livelihood and then which i spoke to you about you know marks reading the marks and then predictions and then eclipses that this day this will happen that day that will happen if this happens and this is what is going to happen in the world and that is what is going to happen in the world like that so then the about rains and all of that then uh, they get into matchmaking they get into getting the husband for the wife and wife for the husband and then engagement divorces and then how to get the child etc etc then then the ghost and uh, rights for propagation of wishes places to bathe etc all of that so he says idam ko bikave appamattakam ora mattakam seela mattakam yena uttu jano tathagasa tathagatas vannam padamano vadaiya so the low smaller middle larger all the three ethics are inferior they are low and they have no no sense okay so let's uh, end for today with this ethic ethics and then we come to the views tomorrow along with eternalism and all of that because that's a view it's a huge topic to take so i don't want to start and then leave it there and then do something any questions on ethics yes sir you i was wondering why you have not even asked me anything I'm kind of sleepy <laughs> oh, okay uh, yeah one question the uh, the short uh, ethics talk about the uh, singing dancing all that already why in the middle he again give like more details i guess it's more details but it seems some repetitive no it's not repetitive you are arranging for it whereas that in the first one is a normal ethics for everyone like if they take a uh, eight precept in that natcha geeta vadita will come for a as well as for le first thing what we just now saw meaning a person who is thinking he has a home to make him sure he doesn't have a home so you give him those eight precepts but this or a person who is already given up is become a samana and a bhikkhu uh, sorry um samana brahmana then they do this organize all of the shows and street shows yes i mean at least the translations has to say engage in seeing the shows i mean yes So they are when they are doing it, they also engage in seeing it, right? Oh, okay. So this is more about them organizing, organizing and seeing it. You have to see it, right? So you first you organize, like you know festivals. Let's take there's another sutta where Buddha says why you shouldn't uh, perform festival. I think it is in D N thirty one. If you read that, you will this huge one. Yes, yes. is it because it does not come under samma ajiva like organizing the shows and all that yes that is uh, doesn't come under samma ajiva as far as the as 
far as the brahmana and my gmc la is concerned they are ready da okay so as far as the brahmana and samana is concerned they are not supposed to have any livelihood is all about livelihood right you see they are being given food to eat but then they do all of this in faith oh, okay so the lay people are giving him in faith and he starts doing all of this so it also becomes like cheating them so it's kind of stealing again see what he says if you read it yatva va paneka bhonto samana brahmana sadha deyani bhojanani bhunjitva te eva roopam then all of that but but it yeah, makes sense like i will say to are you that look i have given up all of this i am now a monk and then uh, why don't we go to a show are you is confused this me you just have <laughs> said right you will not engage in any of these ah that is in while i am in india but not while i am in the us makes sense that way is what he would think but it's not doesn't make any sense yes i said you yeah then i was just thinking on what agreeing on shreya saying i i guess on one sense these people are giving these donations with the hope of gaining merit but also because these people are showing a higher path you know out of sensuality but again again they're doing the same thing as these person are doing which exactly makes- exactly even if i were to organize that matter are you uh some street shows on buddha teach that also is wrong what could be a street show on buddha teach <laughs> why i can have some people perform and you know they are one will become buddha another one will be ashodhara and a sun and some drama and dramatization all of that still it is entertainment i am not supposed to be to see first and foremost is this way if i am first i need to become anagarika second i become a bhikkhu if i am not even an anagarika this makes no sense like that monk who met me in sri lanka and he was talking to me he never said i need to become anagarika but that another friend of mine said that sri lankans won't accept you if you are not an anagarika minimum so it made sense that way so i gave it a thought it makes sense am i not putting many things so if somebody like to call me bhante fine but actually they should call me anagarika bhante that makes it more valid sense in two friend one i am still a lay person and another thing is that i am giving given up a house i'm just doing for completing obligation whatever obligations are yes i'm i'm wondering what it takes for you to be a like a homeless let's say the like i mean does it require you to go to a temple and get you know in that or let's say no stay in your home right but this is let's say donated let's say it's yes. donated to live in yes And so what you ha uh, so first you need to cut it in the mind that the living what you have is donated like my wife and son are doing some service to me so it's my turn to return it back through dhamma this house doesn't belong to me what i need to have that understanding this body doesn't belong to me which is what we are supposed to be working for anyway so that helps in your your growth and hence the sex thought god it just you have just won over it so there's no house if you have a house all the bad qualities will start to come so like that yes I guess in a way the house is somewhere you can keep your immoral secrets right? because 
That's why people require privacy. Because there's something they don't want to be seen, which are immoral. Correct. But when you are homeless, everything is seen. So, so it's better to be like that, better to be naked in that way. No other questions? All done. We'll meet tomorrow. Then we can take the big one. Ditti. Ah, yes. And then I'm just trying to find some question. <laughs> there's a section on arguments right arguments yeah. understand this i know buddha does not engage in any arguments right? um but i guess i mean some of what's saying here are attacking each other like you you're doing this and that um but this let's say defending your own come um, under arguments not like that see now when we take the buddha teaching traditions which are are low and crude and whatever you can so that is where your argument will start oh he is doing that and that is not correct they are doing this and that is not correct i mean they're saying you don't understand this teaching so that's, that's exactly this. what is happening today you know you uh, if you take various theravada various mahayana isn't it that what is happening so it's not the most uh let's say someone comes to me and i explain them i say this you should understand this way that's not argument the moment you create sect sect when you start to divide say that this is what my teacher said that is what my i think what is I guess, in a sense, if you fight, that means you don't have a route to go to. That's why people have to fight, right? That means you don't have a refuge in Buddha Dhamma Sangha in a way. If you have, you shouldn't exactly. have that. Exactly. See, sometimes, or majority of the time, happens due to personal understanding of the Dhamma rather than the scriptural understanding of it. They then say, my teacher has told this. That's the only you don't know this teaching. I know the teaching. And that other person, I don't, I know the teaching, don't know the teaching. So that's the reason it's always better to go scripture rather than have your own interpretation of the scripture. That creates even during, even with lay or with the monk. I guess if both person are referring to the same scripture, but they have different interpretations, they should not fight also because to take one's own interpretation as the only truth is self against, exactly. is against it exactly. as well. Exactly. So you should, we see this, but we're interpreting in different ways. We'll just take it on our own and we can practice. Like, and there's the, like the DN 28 and 29. That exists. How one should come a DN31 talks about many other things. So, if you see, Buddha has not left any stone unturned for anyone not to get what they should get. But still, if people argue, say, I don't believe this is the right sutta, I don't believe this, I don't believe that, then he is gone. Yeah, the Dhamma has included everything that's necessary to, to get to the goal. Exactly. And I've yeah. never left where you're in. Exactly. And yesterday we had one funny argument. 
a funny discussion so supriya is here so she was asking me about savaka that does it include only bhikkhus and i said no ravaka means a savaka shravaka means a person who has come into the dhamma by hearing that includes everyone it includes the lay it includes uh, the monks and all of the people so if they are called upasaka and upasika it means that upa means near upasaka means one who stays near to a teacher and gets it gets an so the lay person means upasaka upas so her thinking was or what she has heard been told is that it only includes bhikkhus and bhikkhuni and nobody else that means a lay person is just a person who will just serve the bhikkhus which looks idiotic so this is what buddha is talking there you don't know the teaching you don't know this because this is how people can distort and then say what i am say- saying is the only right thing and others are not so a small thing that savaka that word can be so widely misinterpreted and then made that to be true so this is what buddha is talking just wanted to give you a straight forward example so yesterday we had more than one and a half hours of discussion on this topic in the evening on what is shravaka because her worry is if we are only supposed to serve the bhikkhus then what we get out of it? the only punya is that we are serving the bhikkhus but you are not serving the bhikkhus you are serving the dhamma nothing to do with bhikkhu but what has happened it has turned out itself into serving the bhikkhu which because i was telling her also now are you in your case you are donating not to me you are donating to the dhamma you have never donated to me so i was asking her that when i came to that place to teach i am not a bhikkhu why do you then give me all these gifts you shouldn't be doing that right if savaka means only bhikkhus then you shouldn't be doing anything to me because i am not a bhikkhu so it's a wrong understanding of whoever it is whoever is telling that that it's only bhikkhus and bhikkhuni because the sutta says is a bhikkave bhikkhu so they think it's only for bhikkhus so everything is for bhikkhu then why i should follow buddha teaching there's no point right unless i'm a bhikkhu i don't have to follow bhikkhu, the buddha itself that means i'm out of the sangha from day one i'm expelled because i'm not a bhikkhu how about an anagarika now maybe anagarika can be taken but you have not been that anagarika by a bhikkhu by a bhante so bhante has nothing to do with whether i'm an anagarika or not so if we formalize everything and say only the bhante can do only the bhante can do only the bhikkhu can do it becomes an authority just like in any religion if you take christianity the priest will do it if you take hinduism a priest will do it so everywhere priest is going to do it so bhante is like a priest so he is doing it which makes no sense yes sir you Yeah, I don't know the Vinaya very well, but isn't it uh, there that how one can become a bhikkhu and all that? But that that's order, so that's fine, right? But it has nothing to that do with that. That is fine. See, yeah. I want to become a bhikkhu is separate. But if I want to follow Buddha teaching, I don't require anybody to give me a permission to follow Buddha teaching, right? That's stupid. it's like i want to go out of uh, suffering and you say wait i will give you permission why you should permit me who are you to permit me i am feeling sick so who are you to permit me whether i should go to a doctor or not right which is idiotic so 
if we are saying the priest class are the problem then the same priest class is doing here what difference in in any religion the priest will come and do things for you baptist priest will do it for everything a priest will do it that means you are incapable of doing it so now you have a fight my priest does this your priest doesn't do it my teacher does this your teacher doesn't do it which is horrible so the word shravaka or savaka in pali has been so thoroughly misinterpreted that it now seems that only bikus or the bante can do something to you so you go to the monastery and you then say bante i want to do this and then he will say okay that's as good as going to a priest and telling him i want to do this please approve and he says as though he can approve is a dhamma which matters not the person that's the problem what we have today yes um so i want to get a little bit more clarity on samana brahmana right you are saying brahmana have two meanings one being the brahmin second being someone who's capable of being the arya who's working on it or something can you give more clarity to let's say brahmana brahmana in at that time also is that a person who is born as a brahmin the lord of b- 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 brahmana vagga you see they say that i am been born to a family of my father and mother are brahmin and they know the veda they know this and they know that this is one part of a brahmin a second part of the brahmin is a person who has understood the arya magga and he is also a brahmin but the, what's the meaning of brahmana is brah in sanskrit means to expand the mana is mind so one whose mind is is expanded which is the same thing as brahma brahm ham brahma it means the same one whose mind is expanded so what is expansion means he doesn't take individual point of he takes overall point rather than an individual so he's not divided so basically a brahmana is a person who is knowing what to do and what not to do he is immoral so he becomes brahmana if you have seen aganya sutta there he says how khatiya will be then how brahmana would be how vaishya will be how shudra will be right he gives all the four categories based upon the rice field cultivation they are not by birth but what uh um, buddha is talking of for the two kinds one who is going on the arya magga is also brahmana but when he put samana brahmana he is talking about the samana is two kind one is jain nigantanatha putta and one is the buddhist itself meaning followers of the buddha are also samana and brahmana also two kind one born brahmin and one who is going on the path of the dhamma who is also a brahmin so he adds both of them so that they're clear what they're supposed to do. yes there are other people other than uh, the um jains and the buddhists right there is other par- paribhajaka or something like paribhajaka are... are are used in in pali as well as sanskrit to mean that they are on their own searching for their own truth and they can be categorized as samana as well sometimes he does it but majority of time you'll see a paribhajaka ah uh, okay praja means is to shake the one who is shaking off all the things to get to know what is reality But, but not yet taking a some tradition like jain or no he doesn't Buddha. take any side of anyone mm. he doesn't say i'm a brahmin by birth he doesn't say i'm brahmin by working or whatever it is he says i'm in search of truth i don't care what whatever i don't care 
So if this person has taken refuge in Buddha Dhamma Sangha, he can no longer be called a Paribhajaka. Yeah, he will he'll go off that, including a Brahmana. He will go off Brahmana and he will, in the end, he will say, you can consider me as a lay follower, right? If you've seen in the end of the suttas where Paribhajaka or Brahmana or whatever it is, then he says, then Buddha says, you will be under probation for four months, or three months. And then he says that, till that time, you can consider me as a lay follower. That means they no longer consider themselves as Paribhajaka or Brahmana and like or Samana also. Until they are in the order which they can be considered Samana. Exactly. So they'll restart again. You you see many suttas. It's there in the end. After that statement, they say, just like a stone unturned and you did this, Gautama, now I want to join your dispensation. Can you allow me? And they say that. He says, but do you have robes and do you have bowl? And they say yes. And then when they say yes, he says that till, the, till you are you're taken, you will be considered as a probation in our tradition. Are you willing to do that? And they say yes. You can consider me as a lay follower till completely taken by your student. Okay. Many suttas have that. Yeah, I, I did not see a specific mention of lay follower in that, but uh, I'll take a closer look. Now, there's no lay follower there. Only in the Chitta Vagga you can find the entire lay thing. It's all about lay. But not in any other sutta. It's always for recluse. Because the reason in the Buddha Dhamma it is, it is that because those people who joined Buddha were the people who had everything and they felt there's nothing beyond this. So all were princes, all were royal people. There were no villagers, basically. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm talking specifically about the paragraph on four months or four year of probation, where that it says, I will stay as a lay follower until that time. I did not see that mention of lay, at least. It's in the there. English. You see, well, no, don't go into such a specific detail. There are a lot of places. If you look into Brahmana Vagga of Sanyukta Nikai, you will find so many suttas where he says, okay, consider me as a lay follower. Okay. If if for your thing, I will send you one sutta where it says lay and can be happy with that. If 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 that gets you out of your constant thinking on it, so don't worry. Okay, thank you. Any other question before we close? No questions? Good then. All right. Good night to you, Ariu, and every, for everyone else, it is good evening and uh, good morning.